The waiters recognized Mrs. Edgerton at once. She was led directly to a table and seated. Her dress was awe-inspiring and showed off her strengths, her ass and breasts. Even the younger women were envious. She ordered wine and then prepared to order one of the specialties of the day. After tasting the wine and accepting it, she sat back to take inventory of her life. Malcolm had been her husband for most of her adult life. He had been a wonderful husband in every way except raising children. That bothered him far more than it bothered her. Periodically, Malcolm apologized to her, sometimes in tears, for not being able to get pregnant. Each time in response, Abigail assured him that she would rather be his only wife than have a single child. She truly loved him, and he loved her. Although Malcolm was already quite wealthy when he and she married, by the time he died, his fortune had become very large. Their marriage was cut short by an airplane crash. It was his private plane that he used to fly to and from business meetings so he wouldn't have to stay in hotel rooms. He didn't want to miss a single night away from his wife, Abigail, whenever possible. She was left with a thriving business and tons of money, but a heart yearning for someone to love and love her. Before Malcolm's death, Abigail was a major player in the world of philanthropy. Once alone, she began devoting a lot of the time she used to spend with Malcolm to philanthropy. She became the local queen of philanthropy. While her philanthropic work replaced much of the time she spent with Malcolm, it did not replace the fulfillment Malcolm gave her in love, care, adult conversation, and physical attention. Her husband was a prolific lover. So far, she hadn't dated anyone else. Anyone she dated would have been mistaken for a gold digger. She was seriously considering a male escort. While she waited, Abigail noticed a young couple trying to sit in a chair. It was a good-looking couple trim and lively in their eagerness to get a table. Abigail summoned a waiter and told him to ask the couple if they wanted to join her rather than wait. After a brief discussion, the couple approached her table. The man spoke first. We really appreciate the invitation to join you, ma'am. We are celebrating our engagement and would like to dine at a very special restaurant. I am Tim Roberts, and my fiancé is Cheryl Zander. By this time, the waiters had already brought out chairs for them to sit down. Are you expecting someone else? Your husband? No, my husband is waiting for me to join him. She noticed the perplexed look on the couple's faces. He died in an accident a couple years ago. He's waiting for me in heaven. Don't worry, I plan to wait until after we eat to join him. She giggled at her joke, and Tim and Cheryl soon joined in the laughter. My name is Abigail Collingwood. It's a pleasure to meet you. Is this your first time here? Yes, we've never been able to afford this restaurant except for special occasions. And you are? Are you a regular? I guess you could call me a regular. Since you're new to this establishment, would you allow me to help you with the food selection? Cheryl replied, That would be wonderful. I was scared to death that I wouldn't even be able to read the menu, let alone choose a dish. Please trust me. Did you see the three specialties on the board? Yes. Did you like any of them? Tim answered this time. I liked all three, but each of them is beyond our budget. Nonsense, waiter. We'll take one specialty each and extra plates so we can try each other's dishes. Cheryl interjected. No, I mean, we can't afford it. Don't worry, dear, I'll pay for it. We can't let you do that. I insist. I'm an old lady with too much money. Think of it as an early wedding present. You are very generous. I don't know how to thank you. Provide good conversation. That will be payment enough for me. During the meal, all three talked like old friends. Abigail guessed that Tim was less concerned with financial matters than Cheryl. The older woman was becoming more and more interested in Tim. He was very handsome, young, athletically built, and witty. He was exactly the kind of man she was looking for as a temporary lover. Cheryl was short but gorgeous, with large breasts and a nice ass. But she didn't seem to possess the same mental acuity as her fiancé. Abigail came up with an idea. Cheryl, where do you plan to go on your honeymoon? Nowhere for now, I'm afraid. We plan to wait and take our honeymoon later when we have more money and time. Tim is still in college and working on his master's thesis. A honeymoon is not a consideration for now. What if I can make it come true so you don't have to wait? Tim joined in. What do you suggest? I'm offering to pay for a two-week honeymoon for the two of you in Hawaii or wherever you want to go. 
They were both flabbergasted. No, we can't let you do something like that. I mean, you don't even know us. I'm not saying you won't have to pay, but it won't be money. Cheryl inquired, what would the price be? I'm offering you two an amazing honeymoon in Hawaii in exchange for me spending one week with your husband. And Cheryl, I'll give you $10,000 to spend while we're gone. I couldn't believe I had done that. After all, we only met tonight, and I wouldn't feel bad if they turned me down. Tim added, no offense, Abigail, but I love Cheryl and I can't cheat on her. Before Abigail could respond, Cheryl entered the conversation. Tim, not so fast. Just think about it. Two weeks in Hawaii, all expenses paid. To start our marriage with the trip of a lifetime and $10,000, it's worth it. You won't mind if I have sex with another woman? Well, we're only engaged. We both had sex with other people before we got engaged. We can postpone the engagement until you get back. It's not like you're going off with some slut you might fall in love with. Are you seriously thinking about me doing that? Yes, if you love me, you'll never hear any regrets from me. Well, Abigail, it looks like you have a sex slave for the week. Tim and Abigail. How do you like the room, Tim? I can't believe it. The view, the hot tub, the... It's just amazing. I hope Cheryl and I don't find the room half as beautiful. Tim, I think it's time for you to stop talking about Cheryl. For the next week, we'll be living with Tim and Abigail. I expect to get my money's worth. Take your clothes off, please. Okay. Abigail grew horny as he showed off more and more of his knobby physique. I'd like it better if you got naked, too. Abigail let Tim undress her. He took his time and paused, kissing and licking her as parts of her body were exposed. By the time he got to her feet, she was already begging him to fuck her. Yes, hell yes. Tim laid her down on the bed and climbed on top of her. You still have a beautiful body, Abigail. Shut up and take me. Yes, ma'am. Soon she climaxed and he kept up. Are you ready to do it again? Oh, the joy of youth. After the third time, they took a break. Tim, you're a fantastic lover. I've never had such good sex. You're great at sex, too, even better than Cheryl. What did I tell you about mentioning her name? I'm sorry. Sex with you is unforgettable. The rest of the week passed in pleasant restaurants, beach fun, and sex. Tim remarked each time that he had never tried this before, when Abigail suggested a different position. They were both beginning to regret the week was over. Abigail, I had an amazing time with you. In many ways, I don't want it to end. Is there any chance we can continue in the future? That wouldn't be fair to Cheryl, would it? You have to be faithful to your new wife. I appreciate that you enjoyed your time with me. I think I have a new favorite memory. I more than justified my money. Tim left for the airport to meet Cheryl for the start of their honeymoon. She never arrived. Hours after he couldn't reach her by phone, he received a telegram. Not coming. Met an old boyfriend. Fell in love again. We're getting married. Best wishes, Cheryl. Sorry. Abigail's cell phone rang. Hello. Did you leave already? No. I wanted to take a little break from my vacation. Why? Did something happen? Cheryl left me. Oh my God, you poor thing. Maybe she didn't. Abigail, would you mind going out with me? Will breakfast be included? I hope so. You know where I am. He hung up. Abigail called her private secretary. When you send money to Cheryl's ex-boyfriend, send a check for him for $10,000 as a bonus.